My name is David Ingram, and we're talking about around the world because we're going to finish this story <laughs> about what is Dan Wal what is a Dan Walco, where Dan Walco comes from, and I've just heard you now Dan Walco is www.cbankcapital.com, and I searched high and low, far and wide, coast to coast, north to south, looking for a guy who could look after my clients who were on had this problem that they'd moved to the States and their banker or trust company or stockbroker in Canada couldn't deal with them anymore or they'd come from the States to Canada and they couldn't be done and I was looking for somebody who could look after all of it and Dan is just about all of it he does have a limitation and that's that he's really not set up to deal with five thousand and ten thousand dollar amounts and I'm still a street level kind of guy and but it's just impractical to deal with those amounts under these circumstances. So we're going to have to, uh, most of the time, is tell people to cash it in, pay the tax, and do something with the money. However, we've been talking to Dan. Dan's talked about how he uh, set up uh, in RBC, and then Royal Trust came along and said he couldn't do what he wanted to do anymore. And uh, you went off and found yourself new digs. What did you do? Uh, well, at the time, actually, it was we decided to move to the Lower Mainland, and... Um, I continued on sort of in a... So you're moving from Edmonton? No, actually I spent some time on the island for several years. Oh, you were in Vancouver yeah, Island then? Yeah, and I was in Edmonton and, oh gosh, David, I mean, I started in... No, where are you from originally? I was raised, my dad was in the mining exploration business. In Thompson, Manitoba or no, something? No, a place called Lynn Lake, Manitoba. Lynn Lake, Manitoba. Shared, Gordon no, Mines. Not, not much different, but no, okay. And uh, dad used to be the guy that fly out to the drill rigs and... You know, they'd set up drill camps and all yep. that kind of stuff. And very much in vogue back in those days because when I was growing up, because as it is today, you know, mining is back in vogue and, and exploration and all that kind of stuff. So I grew up in a small mining town, uh, cold, 45 below, delivered the Winnipeg Tribune every morning, David, at 5.30 in the morning, in the dark, four feet of snow, 40 below. I tell my kids, and they tell tell me, what a crock, Dad. <laughs> I used to, I delivered the Winnipeg Tribune in 50 below too, but I was doing it in Winnipeg. Yeah, I was only thing. I was you never, more, but I was never more than like 100 feet away from a house that I could knock right, on the door well, and be freezing. Well, I grew up in we. Uh, this place is about 60 miles south of the territorial border, so it was. I know. It was cold, um, but it was a great, you know, as any upbringing, it's what you do. But I spent my university years underground as a a no, did you have polar bears there? No, Churchill over towards yep. the coast, right? But no, uh, bears, bears, but not polar bears. But it was great because unlike today, I mean, I look at my kids and they get a summer job, it's tough. <laughs> right? Their definition of a tough job uh, and our uh, definition are quite different. But uh, when I worked there, it was great if you were a kid of a family, you know, somebody yep. who worked at the, for the company, they gave you a job. Well, they put me underground in the second year. And I became so a powder a monkey, you were okay and I was powder a monkey. wrote the blasting certificate. So I came back, gosh, for three or four you years. You got a blasting certificate? Now I, I got this rock in the backyard yeah. here. We can. Uh, so I used to, first year, I used to pack powder, 50 pounds each shoulder down yep. the drift, lo load the hole with the blaster, and then the second year I had my own powder monkeys, get the powder in there, load the holes, wire it up, blast <laughs> it. But it was a great job for a university student. I got so good at it. I worked the night shift, 11 to 7, and the shift boss, if I could wire the blast up in a couple of hours, you know, 4 o'clock in the morning, I'd be done three hours early off shift. It was, there was nothing else to do yep. because I was a blaster. So down there, you may know what a scoop tram is. It's yes, kind of I an know underground, yeah. underground front-end loader, yeah. but they're nice and high, but you can get yourself under a heat lamp. So you go up on the scoop tram and... It's wet down there. Yeah. You just lay under the heat lamp and have a snooze until the shift <laughs> <laughs> is finished. But they used to allow me. It was fantastic because they let me work back-to-back -back shifts because yeah. I was a student and the regular guys would go on holidays. So yeah. I would, and I put together, gosh, in those days, you know, eight, ten thousand, or fifteen thousand dollars a year yeah. in four months in the summer. You know, lots of money to go to university, and it was uh, so it was great. And I paid my way through university working yeah. as an underground miner. And um, so, and then went on to university, went to Notre Dame for high school, Wilcox, Saskatchewan. Wilcox, Father Murray. Father Murray, and was um, a great couple of years there. And then on to university in Saskatchewan, where I took a Bachelor of Commerce. 
finished off the year, fourth year as the president of the College Commerce Student Society. So um, I uh, still like going back there. It's a wonderful campus. I yeah. I still think highly of it. Well, I went to St. Andrews College up there for a I stayed in St. A's the first year. Well, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, well, I, I, I wasn't there very long, but that's beside and, the point. Uh, yeah, then on, I tried to get into the brokerage business right out of college, but they weren't hiring. And there was one guy working for Wood Gundy and was handling this, the um, University Pension Fund in Saskatoon. His name was Bill Ryan. And Bill took me aboard because we were working in the United Way together. I was on the student side. Remember Gulf Steakhouse? And yes, of course. Well, I was a partner in that at one time. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. It's a long goal. It's a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then uh, where was I? <laughs> well, we were just talking about you being the president of the Bachelor of Commerce uh, yeah, thing. Yeah. I think maybe we got a phone call going to interrupt us. <laughs>